What's up, everyone? We are live at 5 here at Broadway.com. It is Monday, March 18th. I'm Paul Wontorek. And I'm Beth Stevens. And we're joined by Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. And not one, but two super talented Broadway leading men who happen to be father and son. Who's oh, here? The Jacoby Gentleman. Ooh. <laughs> right, that's good. <laughs> Mark and Ben. Mark and Ben. Yes, uh, there's a lot to talk about. They're both currently on stage. Uh, ben is in Beautiful. Colon, the Carol King musical. And Mark is in a brand new play called Vilna. Am I saying it right? Vilna. We're going to find out all about it. It opens this week. Uh, but first, today's top five. A Broadway favorite is going to be donning a stethoscope and learning all about pie. Did you know this was going to happen? I did not know this was going to happen. Jeremy Jordan is coming back to Broadway. And Waitress. Waitress Whoa. always surprises the us. The musical. Right? I know. Yeah, it's really good. He's going to play Dr. Dr. Pometer. I always say it wrong. Dr. Pometer, Jeremy Jordan, the OBGYN of your dreams, <laughs> will begin on the Broadway on April 8th. He's succeeding Joey McIntyre, who will play his final performance on April 7th. Pretty exciting. Well, this is, he was just in a, showing his dramatic side. Everybody wanted him to sing. In American Sun. So now right? he, he did is, a play. Now he's back, back yeah, he's to back. singing. A tour favorite is coming by Bubble. So get to know Jenna Claire Mason because she is the new Glinda in Broadway's Wicked. Uh, she takes over the role on April 9th, succeeding the talented Katie Rose Clark. Making her debut. Oh, Broadway debut. She, so she did the national tour. This mm -hmm. happens with a lot of Wicked casting. Yeah, it's People, great. They, they start on the road and then they, they bring them into the Broadway production, uh, especially the Glindas and Alphabas. Um, <laughs> She would, let's see, she did it for a year and she appeared on tour in Newsies and Flash Danced a Musical, which I saw. <laughs> uh, hey, Rochelle Rack. And, um, but more importantly, she was Corey in Duck Commander, the musical in Las Vegas. Remember we were writing about- Why is that more important? Remember we were writing about that? That's an iconic turn. <laughs> um, anyway, but now she's gonna be Glinda. And so I'm sure she'll be here. She's gonna sure. be all over the place. We're gonna see a lot of her. There's gonna be a lot. There's gonna be a lot of her. Uh, can't wait to meet you, Jenna Claire Mason. Welcome to Broadway. Mm -hmm. Even if you heard Laurel, you're gonna want to hear this Ganny. Oi. What? Get it? Oi. <laughs> Come on, the Laurel okay. Ganny debate. So, Come on, it's funny. It's Yanni or Yanni? It's Yanni. It's Yanni. It's Yanni. Like Yanni. a little yawn in your mouth. <laughs> Yanni, uh, Yanni. Remember when I told you about the wonderfully named In Residence on Broadway? That's what they're calling it. In Residence on IROB. Oh, now it has a name, the series? The series has a name at the Lund Fontaine Theater. Well, Yanni... This is the Morrissey series. It's Morrissey, Morrissey and, and Yanni, Yanni yeah. so far. So no matter what kind of music you like, <laughs> there's something Tell for you. Tell us about Yanni. Yanni. Or Yanni, if you prefer. Or Laurel. Uh, is a multiple <laughs> Grammy-nominated composer, instrumentalist, producer, and performer. Uh, yeah, he's been awarded more than 40 platinum and gold albums. Wow. That's a lot. That's yeah. like more than one wall. Um, yeah. He will be playing May 28th through June 2nd. Isn't it kids' music? He also has some children's okay. music. He's also known for his humanitarian efforts. Oh, of course. I'm sorry. As you do. Uh, yeah, he's been all around the world. He's got 25 million albums globally. Sold more than 25 million albums globally. He's, he's a big deal. Yeah, he's popular. Yeah. He's playing on my birthday, so I guess I know where I'm going to be. That's right. Happy birthday, Paul. Fontaine <laughs> Theater. And these two diner favorites are reuniting for a TV movie. Yes, yeah, so we talked last week about this movie, Patsy and Loretta, Correct. which is, is it a Lifetime movie? Of course it's a Lifetime movie. Definitely. This is a movie Very about well cast Lifetime movie. Patsy Cline and Loretta Lynn. And the reason why we are interested is because Megan Hilty and Jesse Mueller are playing these um, country icons. And it's about their uh, friendship, yeah. which I don't think we knew much about. We're going to learn a whole lot. We're going to learn a whole lot because we're going to watch it. And now uh, Joe Tippett has joined the cast. Joe Tippett, and this is kind of interesting, so he played Earl originally in Waitress with Jesse Mueller when it was in Boston. Mm -hmm. Earl's the bad or the misunderstood husband. Bad. I don't know what he is anymore. I feel like we're supposed to be nicer about him. Um, <laughs> he used to be the abusive husband. Now he's like misunderstood Earl and his guitar. Anyway, <laughs> uh, Joe, and then he came back and played it on Broadway, but not opposite Jesse Mueller. But right. now they're going to be in the movie together. So anyone who saw Waitress up at ART. He's playing her husband. Playing her husband. And yeah. is, a, is he a mean husband or a... We'll find out. We'll find we'll out. Watch the Lifetime movie. We'll find out. We this will be filming later in the year in Nashville and premiering late in 2019. And Paper Mill's next season has been announced. Okay, take a deep breath because I have a lot to say. Okay, okay. let's get through it. We're going to 
just get you all booked out sure. through 2020 in Melbourne, New because Jersey. Paper Mill's very pre-Broadway pre now. It's very pre. It's very pre-Broadway. <laughs> okay, first of all, the Chasing Rainbows, The Road to Oz, Judy Garland musical. Obviously about Judy AKA Garland. AKA the Judy Garland musical. Yeah. AKA the Judy Garland musical plays September 26th through October 27th okay. in Melbourne, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. Moving on. I hear it's good. Cinderella favorite Cinderella uh, November 28th through December 29th so spend, we already had that we spend the holidays okay it's okay. a holiday offering it's a holiday yeah. offering okay this is a big deal mm -hmm. the highly anticipated Andrew Lloyd Webber musical review unmasked which was previously announced for paper mill but now mm -hmm. they've got it all nailed down for this January like, 30th 2019 yeah. today's guests know about this some of this music they know yeah. a lot about the, it's a fan, they know a lot about the masking music. and the unmasking yeah. um, so that's all about Lord Lloyd yeah, it's Webber. A review. I want to say it like correctly. All the characters are mixing together. I've heard weird things about it. I can't wait to but see it what it is. But it has some new material, specially written for the production. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that means, but it sounds mm -hmm. exciting. Okay, then there's a new staging of the musical comedy favorite, Sister oh, Act. Wait a minute, I just noticed that is now directed by Lawrence Connor. Yes, who did School of Rock. And originally, uh, originally it was. Um, I don't know who it was originally. You know, so John so Doyle. Oh, John Doyle. Yeah, so, ah. it's, so, it's, so it's sort of gone through some. And I should say that uh, Unmasked features a book by Richard Curtis. Moving on to Sister Act, April 1st through April 26th, 2020. So book ahead on your calendar. And then closing out the season is The Wanderer. This is the, the Dion musical Dion we've been musical. talking about. May 28th through June 20th, 2020. Very far away. You know, The Wanderer. Run around Sue. That, they're calling that Teenager one pre-Broadway. That's pre-Broadway. Yeah. Yeah. They're probably all more or less pretty Broadway. Yeah. So it's going to be like uh, Bronx Tale, Jersey Boys, Newsies, Ain't Too Proud. That stuff. The Wanderer. Hey, okay. there's some other stuff on the site, isn't there? Okay, thank you, Beth. That was a lot of Melbourne, New Jersey news. Went. Yeah, I just want to say check out Rachel Tucker, who was just nominated for an Olivier Award. Oh. Is, uh, there's an interview with she's her in London. Sky Come in, uh, from Away. From Away, yeah. Yep, and she's, of course, a favorite Elphaba from Wicked. And we have some spring preview stuff. You want to mm -hmm. tell us what's on there? I don't know. Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Oklahoma, all my sons, Beetlejuice, you know, that stuff. All of those. Every Check day. it out. Every Lots day we talk about new shows. Every day. Thank I'm you gonna so much. I'm going to get out of the path. way. You've got some gentlemen here. Yeah, there's a lot. This is very important. Caitlin, can you uh, tell us about today's guest? Yes, gladly. Today we have father son duo Mark and Ben Jacoby in the studio with us. Mark is currently starring in Off Broadway's Vilna and is known for his ton Tony nominated turns in Showboat. Uh, his other Broadway credits include Sweet Charity, The Phantom of the Opera, Ragtime, Grand Hotel, and a whole lot more. Ben is currently appearing in Broadway's beautiful mm. uh, The Carol King Musical, and that actually marked his Broadway debut. You may have seen him when he was on tour in Phantom of the Opera. Uh, make sure to follow Ben on social media, Ben M. Jacoby, and then follow Vilna. Is t Vilna's social media is Vilna the Play, so you can stay up to date on all things that uh, Mark is doing. Uh, please leave all of your questions in the comments below, and please welcome Ben, Mark, and Paul. Thank you, Caitlin. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hello. Thank you for coming. I, I, I love that you came together. So you, you do speak to each other. <laughs> On occasion, yes, we do. <laughs> Only when we do joint interviews. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> it's good to have you together. And I love that you. you're kind of wearing matching outfits, uh -huh. accidental, planned. Well, accidental. <laughs> <laughs> Should I take my brown sweater off? If, if you're, se no, you're self-conscious about looking like that. No, it's fine. Uh, I think we have <laughs> enough contrast. Yeah, I think we're okay. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. It's, it's like a, a, but it could work for like a, a family photo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you know that? It could work for like a Sears portrait studio moment. Yeah. Uh, how you doing? I'm okay. Well, I'm, well, yep. I'm going to start with you because uh, you're like Because I look... You're, you're, like, you're the one who's to me. more likely not to be doing well. Is that what <laughs> No, no. And uh, Ben has been here before, although we have a new set since he was yeah, here. It's been a I'm couple impressed. of years. Because he's been in beautiful three years now. This, I mean, wow. How do you do that? <laughs> you did it. What was not your longest you, run on Broadway? Three years. Yeah, and that right was... Right at three years. Phantom? It was actually three, th three things I did for... Roughly three years. Okay. Phantom, Showboat, and Ragtime took right. up a decade of my life. Right. Wow. But it was a, it was a pretty good one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, well, I mean, you've done a lot of amazing, amazing shows. And, and so how does it feel now to see him? I mean, he's kind of like hit it right out of the ballpark with a three-year run. I mean, it's not even over. He's still in it, actually. Yeah. Uh, that must feel good because I'm sure when, when one of your kids gets into the business, it's kind of like... Is, are there so trepidation many, about that? So many people uh, of my generation say, oh, well, your son, the actor, you couldn't talk him out of it? <laughs> like, it's such a bad way of life. Right. And I, I say, I never tried you to talk him out. You don't see it that way. No. 
I don't. And I'm, of course, I'm an abject fan. That, that let's <laughs> just get that on record right mm-hmm. now. But and of course, of course, I cannot project or uh, pretend that I'm objective. But uh, I think it's wonderful uh, what he decided to do and what he has done. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm all in. Do you remember the first time you saw him do something on stage and you went, "Oh, he has, he has, there's something going on here." I do. What was it? Captain Hook in Peter Pan. Uh, when he was in high school. turn, yeah. He had, he had done other things previously, but that's, I still tell him that's the best thing you've ever done and, and ever will do. <laughs> that's a long time ago. <laughs> never will do, right. Yeah. I mean, and you, you were how you'll, old? You'll work, but... <laughs> <laughs> and how old were you at this point? I don't know, I was 16 or 17. Okay, like so you're never going to top that. I guess. <laughs> it's all downhill from tough. 16. <laughs> Shame you. And I remember all had 26. <laughs> the yeah. last time you were here, you talked about uh, seeing your dad specifically in Ragtime. I think that was, you said that, that was sort of like the one that really sort of like stood out, you remember. Well, I remember when, before it came to New York and they were trying out in Toronto, going up and visiting, and I got to go all by myself. Yeah. Um, and, and I sat there and watched tech for, you know, like three days, just watched tech. Wow. And I think maybe it was your reaction that made me think, like, maybe I do like this because you like, well, why do you even want to? keep coming here and w- sitting in a dark theater for like, <laughs> you know, a 10 out of 12. Right. So you're going to be bored out of your mind, man. You don't, but he never seemed to be. Wow. So, and that's, th- I think that's, yeah, maybe when I thought like, oh, maybe I am into this. Wow. So Mark, let's talk about your new play. T- okay. Tell everyone about it. It's at uh, the theater at St. Clemens, right? Correct. Uh, well, Vilna is uh, also called Vilnius. It is, it's the capital of Lithuania. Hmm. And it was a very, uh, important site in um, the era of the Second World War. There were um, Nazi atrocities there, mass executions. And um, so that's why it's called Vilna. This was not the death camp um, situation that we're, we all know about, but uh, Jews, particularly those who were infirm, were trained out to the forest and executed in mass graves. And ultimately, they had more able-bodied Jews who had to go and do the work of arranging the bodies and positioning everyone, and and they stayed there um, on site. And they figured out, a a couple of them figured out how to tunnel out and and Hmm. escape. Wow. Uh, It was a very sort of a Shawshank situation, very exciting. so this is, our playwright, Ira Fuchs, was in a writer's workshop and received an assignment to write a play about an article you found in the newspaper today. Hmm. And that was the day New, the New York Times published uh, an article explaining that the tunnel had been discovered. Wow. The actual escape route had been archeologically discovered. And so he wrote this play based on that event. Um, so that's our situation. And how's it going? Well, I, I probably don't have to explain that it's very difficult material in yeah. a certain way, but also in a, in a certain way, and perhaps an ironic one, it can be uplifting. And I think, I think Ira and our director, Joe Disher, have achieved that. So it's, it, it's tough in certain ways, but it's, it's also sort of heart, heartening in, mm-hmm. in a certain way, what they were able to do mm-hmm. uh, under these very dire circumstances. Has it changed over the span of your career, sort of what interests you and what you want to dig into and what you want to take on? Yes, I, uh, I was able to get on a stage initially because I could sing, mm-hmm. frankly. I, you know, I had a talent, a specific identifiable talent, right. and that got me on the stage. And, and that was my primary interest for a long time. But Sweet it, Charity, was that the first Broadway? That was my first Broadway uh-huh. show, yeah. yeah. Um, Anyway, uh, increasingly, as I've gone through life, I've become more and more interested in the the acting values that certainly impact musicals, but are more somewhat more richly explored, I think, in in straight plays. So that's that's really my main interest now. Mm-hmm. But there's also a, a practical aspect. I mean, as you as one ages, the the requirement of a voice, a trained voice, diminishes. Yeah. So even if you're my age and you can sing, it's not as useful. It's not as much of, of a benefit to mm-hmm. be able to do so. In fact, sometimes it seems to me they don't really want the older characters to sing well. 
Mm -hmm. it's, it's in contradistinction mm -hmm. to the aging process. Mm -hmm. So that's a little cynical on my part, but that's <laughs> But do you still sing? Do you guys ever sing together? Well, we, we, we did do, have. We, we have done a, a, we did a benefit for the Shakespeare Theater of New Jersey where we sang. We uh, kind of doctored the lyrics of um, you're, You're nothing without me from City of Angels. Oh, that's a good choice. Um, yeah, to make it work for you know a father son situation, <laughs> and we did a production of of Light in the Piazza at the Main State Music Theater, like ten summers ago now. Uh huh. Oh wow. Okay. But I don't think we actually sang together in that show really, no. except for like the cacophony of some of those <laughs> like you know Italian families yelling and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how are things over at the Sondheim? The Sondheim, they're great. <laughs> We're in our Sixth year, we just did our big five-year anniversary yeah. uh, thing, uh, and Carol showed up and was sort of dramatically revealed on the piano, right. and that was that was super exciting. I've never, I've never opened a show on Broadway, but it was the closest I can imagine of having that feeling of opening yeah. a show on Broadway with like you know the, it was crackling in that theater. It was really fun, um, but yeah, it's a great place to work. The people are great. I like my role in the show. I continue to, yeah. I'm having a great time. Yeah, it's a great role. Yeah. And how many times have you seen it? Have you seen him in the show? He's, he's pretty good. I should get over there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. I, I've seen it three times, uh -huh. and I'm coming up on my next visit, I think. Yeah. And, uh, you, know, you know, I'm not really sure it would have been a show that I would have seen had my son not been in right. it. Right. But now I'm glad for two reasons <laughs> that he is because I, I I rather like it yeah and it's it's if I can brag a little bit it's so remarkable to me that his previous job the main job that he did previously was doing Raul in the national yeah. tour of Phantom and now he's doing Barry Mann and how often would you see the same actor take mm -hmm. on those roles mm -hmm. they're so disparate and okay. I, I just think it's a real credit to him that he is able to do that there are a lot of actors, however, who have played Raoul and the Phantom. That there is are. a that is a common track, and you you were one of the greatest Phantoms. I mean, fantastic. I love I love your Phantom. I could talk about <laughs> um, is that a role you would ever wanted? Would you ever want to play sure, the Phantom? Yeah. yeah, I mean, you have Sign a great, up, you, got, yeah. you guys have great chins. It's great. It's a great family uh, trait with the chin. Oh, gonna, listen, look, I mean, look, he has a great I mean, cleft. Is I that necessary for the Phantom? <laughs> a good chin, a solid chin. So, so you'd be into that? Sure. Oh, uh, okay. All right, sure. cool. Yeah, I mean, I'd like that. Yeah, he can give you some like. In the Yeston Phantom, actually, there's a. Uh, there is a father-son component. Yeah, that's true. I know we're not talking about the Yes and Phantom, but I'm just saying that there, there is, a, there's a possibility there too. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and you also, I have, I have to mention, whenever anyone comes on who has any connection to my favorite musical of all time, <laughs> Grand Hotel. Really? Oh, huh. I love I love my Grand Hotel. <laughs> they, people it. know, but uh, what? And you played. Um, you, you, I know you. You I, covered. A bunch I started of roles out as a standby in the original mm -hmm. cast. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you covered the great David Carroll among other people. Mm -hmm. And you play and prizing and yes yes and the the doctor the narrator oh yeah yeah uh huh <laughs> the heroin addict I never got on for that one <laughs> but I did get on for prizing and then then I I briefly. Had the role of yeah. of the Baron. Yeah. Do you remember his full name? Uh, von Geigern, wasn't Baron it? Baron Felix Amadeus von Benvenuto von Geigern. Wow. Wow. <laughs> you had to say it. You had to say it every night in the show. But, um, <laughs> Listen, uh, why do you think it's not done more often? It's a because uh, well they did it at Encores. Did you see it at Encores last year? No, I did not. It's tricky but I was because aware. I think Tommy Toon's staging is was so iconic and specific and mm -hmm. very much I feel like back then there were so many like director choreographer strong hand shows mm -hmm. that were very much in his vision and I think it's hard to do it outside of that mm. although I'd be curious to see someone do it just completely different no I don't know what do you think I loved it I'm not I'm not sure I mean the answer I'm not sure of the answer to my question it's a big show <laughs> yeah it is a big it's show. complicated it's very atmospheric yeah I don't know if you could take that out of it Right. Um, but I, I think it's a wonderful score, and there was, you know, there was great drama surrounding that when Maury, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. came in and. Oh yeah, you saw the whole creation of it. Yeah, that was exciting because it was real life drama, you know, when. It was in Boston, and they. Had it to was fix in it. Boston, yeah. and um, you know the Kismet guys. Um, 
George Wright, Wright and Wright Forrest, and Forrest yeah. uh, you know, all of a sudden weren't there anymore. Right. We had our, you know, company powwow and there was no Wright and Forrest and there was Maury. Right. And it was like, whoa, what is going on? Here? You could probably write a great book. <laughs> you, I'm sure you've seen a lot. <laughs> I mean, do, you, do, you, do you know a lot of his like showbiz stories? Does he like tell you a lot of things about his? I mean, you were little for a lot. Yeah. Of it. Well, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think he's got a lot of good stories. I yeah. can't think of one right now. I <laughs> uh, promise they're there. there. Um, <laughs> well, I, it, I, I couldn't help but cross my mind with this um, the Fosse Verdon thing coming. Yeah, up. yeah I was thinking that too. With, with, but I don't know. Yeah, because yeah, you actually worked with him. You, yeah, I did indeed. Yeah. Uh, on that switch never, never, never oh, forget it. It was, you know, it, it, it's just, <laughs> it was just such a thing for me at that time because I'd walk in on the first day of rehearsal and there's Bob Fosse and Gwyn Verdon and Cy Coleman and these people. I mean, it was, it was that moment in my life, like, like whoa. Yeah. I, what am I doing here? <laughs> it yeah. just was thr simultaneously thrilling and horrifying. Uh, and very exciting, and I, I will never forget things that Bob Fosse said to me. I mean, I really liked the guy, and I flatter myself that he liked me, and I, you know, I miss him. Mm -hmm. I miss him still. Mm. He was a wonderful, he was a, you know, he was an amazing man, obviously, in many ways, not all of them positive, but he was a wonderful director and craftsman of mm -hmm. musicals. Mm -hmm. mm. And I still think about things that he, you know, offered. What are you, you going to watch the show? Oh, sure. It, it's oh, wow. weird to see that to see yeah. like things yeah. from from your things you actually experienced become like a TV show. That's you know. Yeah, yeah. They were rehearsing in the same studio where we were rehearsing Vilna, so I had a chance to talk to some of those people who were involved uh -huh. in it. Uh, rehearsing, I guess, and maybe shooting. I'm not sure. Right. Some of the, you know, um, studio sequences. Right. Mm. Cool. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, hey, Caitlin, yes. what are the people online saying? Yes, we do have <laughs> questions. Um, so, Mark, oh. this is for you. Uh, Mark, Scott would like to know, what drew you to Vilna after doing so many musicals and now you're doing a straight play? What drew you to it? Uh, well, partly the answer that I previously mm -hmm. gave about my interests, mm -hmm. uh, being what we affectionately call in our family show trash for most of my <laughs> career. Show trash? <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> you can't say that at Broadway.com. <laughs> a little late for that. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's an affectionate term. It's, uh -huh. it's with a twinkle in our eye, mm -hmm. meaning musicals mm -hmm. as opposed to a serious right. actor. Right, got it. Like mm -hmm. Benny's. So yeah. anyway. Song and dance. In, in, when somebody wants me to do a play, I ask fewer questions. I, mm -hmm. you know, I'm there. That's what I want to do. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm interested in. So there's that. Um, and being, you know, like any actor's life, except Ben, <laughs> most of it's spent, a lot of it's been out of town. And this is right. not out of town. Right. So I'm here. And I had, a, I had a good relationship with our director, Joe Disher. And the material is fascinating and, in, in, you know, intriguing. And it was a no-brainer. Cool. Awesome. So, Ben, this question is for you. Jackie asked, what was it like doing the last five years just a few weeks ago? And now you're back in Beautiful. What was that like? It was great to get to do, um, like you, we have talked about, I've been in the show for three years, so it was great to like work on something else for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it was very fast. I mean, it was two weeks total. Um, so we rehearsed here for a week and went out to Big Sky, Montana, which is absolutely gorgeous. If wow. you haven't been there, go to Big Sky. Um, it's really an amazing, amazing When I place. get there, will you be singing the last five years? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I, mean, I guess I'll I can go. make any I'll promises. Come. But, um, yeah, uh, it was, you know, so it was very fast and there's a lot of material. Mm -hmm. um, but um, I've wanted to do that show for a long time, ever since I heard the music in college. Uh, and I got to do it with my friend Abby. And that was a plus. So, I mean, you know, two thumbs up. That was fantastic. Amazing. And this will be our last question. So Scott wants to know, uh, for both of you, how have you each like influenced and supported each other's career since, you know, Ben started his acting career and going on with that? Mm. Wow. Uh, 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 do, you, do you have anything to say? You go first. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, 
you know, I have, it's, it's not that hard for me to be emotionally supportive because I believe in him. Mm. So that just comes naturally. Uh, there have been times, as there are with most people coming up in life, where there have been some financial things that I could help with, at least temporarily. Uh, so there's that. Uh, unfortunately, when Ben was very young and in school shows, I was on a schedule that frequently was hard for, you know, everything, everything that kids do in school is in the evenings and on weekends. And of course, if you're an actor in a stage show, that's, show trash. that's if you're show trash, show trash. That's, show trash. that's when you work. <laughs> so that was, and I, at first when he was little, I don't think he understood it. Like, I don't, mm. I don't get it. But then part of his sort of getting inculcated into the business was, Think, I think at some point I recognized he thought it was kind of cool, kind of mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Dad, Dad so, does something different, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, yeah, and yeah, that's me. <laughs> I, 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 I learned everything I know about being show trash from him. <laughs> um, so, in that, I mean, I don't really know what I have to offer him except to support him by seeing what he does. I plan to see Vilna. I've tried to see everything I possibly can get to, um, you know, my current schedule permitting. Um, and, you know, I still learn from him every time I go see him in something. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Don't laugh. I mean <laughs> it. <laughs> oh, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> cool. Well, I no. love that you're both, uh, you know, the, I love that you're back on stage and I love that you're going to clearly be uh, singing the hits of Dairy Man for a very long time <laughs> over at the Sondheim. Uh, so Vilna opens on Wednesday. How long is it right. running at the uh, April theater? 14th, I believe, is, okay. is our scheduled cool. closing. Great. It's a beautiful little off-Broadway theater. So it's a very different experience. It right? is. Um, yeah. it, it is. It's kind of cool. Yeah, I it's love it. Cool. Uh, yeah. And of course, you can see Ben in beautiful Colin, the Carol King musical. <laughs> Gotta have punctuation. <laughs> Thank you both for being here. Uh, hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to this interview and more everywhere you get your podcast by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Christy Altamare one last time about Anastasia.